I, uh, I, I always did the show for shits and giggles and for the platform. I didn't think it'd be alcohol. But when the opportunity by season three was staring me in the face, I actually committed to doing Loverboy and plunked down the cash before we even knew we were going to get a season three. Really? Because I was just so convinced. I'm like, even if we don't get picked up and film again, as I was saying, like, there's no hard tea out there that isn't absolutely horrible for you. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to change that. Cool. And, uh, yeah. Of course, now we have other products, which we'll try today. We have spreads yeah. and cocktails. Oh, yeah. so we have so much to try. But okay, <laughs> that so that's an interesting transition. You went from promoting the the brands you liked, and then NBC kind of saying, "Hey, you can't do this anymore." There has to be a relation between Loverboy and the show. Like, or is there equity involved with that? So, or? so Bravo, the only relationship I have is them telling me to cool down. <laughs> Hyping it because <laughs> really? I'll be like Loverboy merch all day every day if I could. They're like Kyle, can you can you change because this isn't an infomercial? And I'm like, well, it should be, right? Exactly. <laughs> so they didn't require you to pay no, them anything. They, or? Well, technically speaking, ever since Bethany you know sold Skinny Girl, they started rethinking how they put together the talent agreements. And so if there is ever an uh, you know a liquidity event where I sell Loverboy and it's it's and I'm still on the air, technically speaking, they get some type of cut. It's nominal but it allows them to participate in the upside, which is good. They don't think like that. They're not like venture investors right. or, or beverage investors, but um, at least they know they have some skin in the game if there is some type of uh, exit down the road. Now, how does it work with the other members of the show? Or did, did they want equity or involvement? Well, no, I mean, like before I did this, I mean, we'd either have brands giving us alcohol or we were buying it. Oh, so I don't give a shit. Because believe it or not, we pay for our groceries, we pay for our booze. I mean, we, we weren't dummies. Like, hmm. Season one, we're like, yo, so and so knows the 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 winemaker at Whispering Angel, so we drew we drank an absurd amount of rosé not only because we liked it because we had endless amounts. Mm. Otherwise, we'd be paying for it. And so every big party you see, like we're either buying all that booze or the or I'm supplying it. So that the the house is totally cool. A, they love it. B, it's free, right? I use it as a marketing expense. And it's a win-win, you know. Wow. Everybody kind of comes on the show for different purposes, but um, but yeah, this is my baby. I guess now at this point, you have so much leverage. Like again, if somebody wants to be on Summer House, they're almost happy to and, and to promote Loverboy because it's giving them that extra clout. Yeah, that, I mean, look, if if someone if, if if like Paige approached me and she's like, Kyle, like, you know, I get I get approached by big alcohol brands all the time. You know, sometimes I turn them down because I'm I'm feeling guilty. Sometimes I'll do something. Um, could we do something? Yeah. And I'd be like, absolutely, let's figure it out. Because like, my cast has been drinking it with me the whole entire time. Right. So I know they're fans of the brand. Sure, it's natural. So yeah, but 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 currently it's just it's very informal. I mean, if they don't want to drink it, they grab something else. And that and, and now it's like the mob mentality. You're not gonna be the one person not drinking a little <laughs> boy in the show. No, I mean this. Look, I, I don't expect people to drink this thing day in day out for the entire weekend, right? Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not gonna hassle someone if they're. If they're drinking like a glass of rosé, if someone drink, brings in like a, a high noon, I'd be like, "Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> just peer pressure to not drink yeah. high noon. It's ever gonna. I'll just show. Hug. someone showed up to my birthday, my 40th birthday, and um, they they showed up with like some white claw or something, and I just oh. like I took the box and I just threw it in the woods. Ooh, good. I was like, "Hey, thanks." Ooh. Uh, if you if you don't know now, you know. I have my own brand. <laughs> there you go. I don't need I don't need a, a gift of my competitors. No, nah, but you you leveraged the platform you had and with like the perfect product. Like you couldn't have picked a better product than, than Loverboy. Well, think about it. Like, you know, it's very easy to get too banged up if you're making like vodka sodas all day. Oh yeah. Right. So these are 4.2% ABV by design. That, that, that percentage has worked for light beer yep. for 40 years. I know most hard seltzers are at five, but that also allows us to bring the calories down a little bit. That's okay. Now it makes sense. Yeah. So I was we're 90 now. calories, zero sugar. Right. Most hard seltzers are 100 calories with like one or two grams of sugar um, and no real ingredients. Right. Like so we're using, it starts with real organic brewed tea. The 11.2 ounce, whatever that is, right? That's 19.2 ounce. No, this is 19, but that's 11.5. What's that? 11. Yeah. So 5? since, so we, we don't fill these all the way up. It's 11.5 ounces because since we're using not just like natural flavors, we're using real ingredients like tea, juice, et cetera. Right. It allows us to make sure we can pasteurize it correctly. It also, a little, little inside secret, creates a nice little gap for a floater. Oh, oh, interesting. I wish I knew that before cracking this one open. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check this one out right here. 
because it's just as good or maybe even better. Cheers.